Now, they call it the Gulag, an immigration detention center in the Philippines that has been making headlines for all the wrong reasons. Detainees claim the center is squalid, rat-infested and overcrowded. Nine Britons themselves accused of breaking Filipino laws are currently detained in the center. They allege corruption and bureaucracy in the center has led to some detainees spending years waiting for their cases to be processed. Our correspondent Howard Johnson has obtained shocking images from inside the detention center and has been to meet the Britons in side to hear firsthand what life is like there. Rats and cockroaches, overcrowding and lack of basic facilities. Detainees at the Bicatan Detention Centre may have been accused of breaking the law in the Philippines, but according to the country's constitution, they should be granted acceptable living standards regardless of whether they are innocent or guilty. The Bicatan Immigration Center is inside a police camp on the outskirts of the Philippine capital, Manila. And the camp has long had a notorious reputation. In the 1970s and 80s, opponents of the former Philippine dictator Ferdinand Marcos were routinely tortured here. Now the detention facility is where foreigners wait to find out if they will face the courts or be deported back to their home countries. Detainees are held on charges of anything from visa violations to violent crime. Many say they are innocent but can endure lengthy waits to present their cases before a judge. We're on our way to the detention centre now. It's been under lockdown for the last two weeks after a detainee tried to escape. Mobile phone use was restricted and visitation rights withdrawn. We're going to meet some Britons today who say conditions in there are really dire. We weren't allowed to bring our cameras into the immigration centre, but inside I spoke to five UK nationals. One man's allegations particularly stood out. He alleged that he went into solitary confinement without food or any human contact. He said he only had a rusty tap for water, which was undrinkable. Uh, he said that if you get sick inside there, you might as well be dead. He said they might as well hang people when they arrive because conditions there as far as health care are pretty much minimal. <laughs> that was a little renegade there at that age. We're going back plenty of years, you know. The detainee in question wanted to hide his image and some details of his arrest so as not to worsen his situation. He was recently acquitted of the charges and is awaiting deportation. It's gradually got worse and worse. He was put into the cage, which was um, no taller than three foot high. You couldn't stand up. You know, and he just got covered in sores and bites. There was cockroaches in there. He just became very ill, and uh, so he would not have survived two weeks in there. It's really got uh, very worrying now. You know, I knew he was handling it quite well up to a year, and uh, he's getting very depressed now, and uh, he wants out. And there are others who claim the detention centre is not fit for purpose. One of them is the founder of the campaign website Voices from a Box. It regularly posts news and images from inside the centre, farmed out by detainees inside using their phones. The website's founder, who wishes to remain anonymous, was also once a detainee. There were beatings. People were treated there worse than we would treat farm animals. There, people committing suicide. Just had enough. They couldn't take it anymore. He says the not knowing when his detention would end was like mental torture. I've been diagnosed with PTSD. I'm undergoing therapy every Thursday. I don't feel comfortable in trains underground. I prefer to take a bus than be in a confined space where I can't say, stop, I need to get off. He says he set up the website to campaign for a reform of Philippine immigration laws to ensure there are time limits on detention lengths and to allow people to be released on bail if they are accused of a minor crime. And those accused of more serious crimes should be dealt with swiftly by the country's justice system. We contacted the Philippine Bureau of Immigration to arrange an interview and to discuss the allegations, but they declined to comment. The British ambassador to the Philippines is Daniel Proust. 
In May, he and other concerned EU and foreign ambassadors approached the Philippine authorities to express concern over standards in the facility. Clearly I could see from my time there that the overcrowding is an issue. Access to basic facilities is an issue. Uh, my sense is that there's a genuine determination to address these issues. I think there are plans to expand the facilities as well. You raised concerns. I just wondered if you um, spoke also about the uh, solitary confinement. Mm. Some of the Brits have been stuck in this room for days without decent food, with bad water. Have you raised this allegation with the authorities? Mm. Where in that case or other cases any of our detainees have concerns about their treatment, obviously we, we raise them, obviously we escalate them. There are limitations in terms of what we can do. We can't get people out of detention, but we absolutely do everything we can to represent their interests with the authorities that are detaining them to ensure their rights are being respected. For now, allegations of duty of care failures continue at the centre. But even for those fortunate enough to have left it, the trauma will never go away. No matter what happens today, I'm in a better place than where I came from. There's no need to go and ask somebody to open the door, and that is a lot of peace of mind right there. The torture has ended, but the scars remain.